Let's face it guys, these cars are eight to 10 years old now at this point. And although I know we all wanna to try to pull as much power out of these things as possible, what we need to be focusing on is maintenance and ensuring their longevity and, the, and that they keep running properly going forward. Now, a lot of you watching might consider some of this stuff common sense, right? But I've had a lot of questions come across lately through Instagram and YouTube about what I recommend for maintaining and prolonging the life of the 2014, 2015 Infiniti Q50. So, I'm going to make a video and I got to say that a lot of, if not most of everything I talk about here translates over or crosses over to the G37 as well. So hopefully you guys find this useful. So I'm just kind of winging this here from off the top of my head and what I consider to be important. And a lot of stuff will cross over to really any vehicle, but there are three or four main categories. So I'll just go through them. We're going to start with lubes and fluid. Engine oil changes and filter changes is obviously the first thing that probably comes to most people's minds. I think the car, the, the manual says every 7,500 or 10,000 miles, even with synthetic fluids. I, I don't like that. I would say change the oil in your VQ37 every 5,000 miles at the latest. If you do a lot of city driving, heavy stop and go traffic, varying temperatures and things like that, I would say change it even more often than that. 3,500, 4,000 miles. If you do a lot of highway driving, 5,000 miles, maybe you can, if you forget to go a little longer than that, it's okay, but I, 5,000 miles is generally where I like to change the oil on the VQ37. A neglected fluid is the rear diff fluid, the rear gear oil. I think the manual recommends to change that every 25,000 miles or so. I, I doubt that most people do this, uh, but I would highly, highly recommend it. Check out my rear diff fluid change video for the Q50. You'd be surprised at how much gunk and stuff gets built up in there just because it's metal on metal. Those gears are turning and they're turning fast. So taking care of the rear diff is is really important it's great it's important for improving performance of your vehicle but also uh, improving and maintaining good fuel mileage as well if that diff fluid is worn out and the friction increases in those gears in that rear end it, it's more work for your car to move it forward same for performance if you're trying to go fast and your rear diff is working against you because of the friction and the heat that that thing is generating it's just going to be detrimental so Rear, a good rear gear fluid and regular changes is important, especially if you're pushing the car hard. The more hard you push the car, the more often you should change that fluid. Another highly neglected fluid is coolant. I, I, I would be willing to bet that most people out there with these Q50s now never change or never have their cooling system flushed. Probably just see their coolant temperature staying fine and they don't ever think that they have to worry about it. The fact is though, guys, that these types of fluids break down, especially if your vehicle is going through varying heat cycles, you're in hot weather temperatures, uh, or you're really beating on the car, it's going to break down over time and it's going to be less effective as time goes on. So make sure you're taking care of your cooling system. It it's very important. And one of the most commonly asked questions I get is about the transmission fluid. Should we change or should we have the transmission flushed? Uh, because the manual says that it is a lifetime transmission or it's a maintenance free transmission. I don't buy it. I have a feeling it's a lifetime transmission or maintenance free transmission for the life of the car, which they probably estimate to be like 75 or 100,000 miles or something like that. We all know that the the 2014 and 2015 Q50s have some transmission issues. I, I don't think that's fluid related necessarily, but the fact is if you really beat on the car, of course that tranny fluid is going to start breaking down as well, just like a regular engine fluid and just like rear, rear diff fluid, it's going to break down. Um, this is a tough one. I would say if your transmission is fine, and this is just based on what I've heard other people's experiences being, uh, if you're, if your transmission is shifting relatively smoothly and you're not noticing any clunking or weird shifts or hard shifts, I honestly would just leave it alone. This is what I tell people for this Q50. Uh, if it's shifting hard or it's your RPM is hanging and it's not, you know, it's not shifting properly or it's clunking a lot, do a drain and fill. Have a dealership do a drain and fill. Don't flush it. The horror stories I've heard from these transmissions comes from a flush. Uh, it just, it just, I don't know if some of the, the crap gets suspended in there or it gets tossed around or uh, some of the gunk that gets adhered to those gears actually is helping your transmission but when you do the flush it moves all those particulates out and it no longer 
it, the, the teeth no longer grab like they normally do. I, I don't know, whatever the case may be, I'm not a transmission expert, but like I said, it's those are where the horror stories come from is when a dealership does a flush, the car never seems to shift right. So if you're going to mess with it, drain and fill only. That's my recommendation. Another important category that I've mentioned is fueling, guys. Uh, it's sort of kind of a no-brainer. A lot of people ask if they can run 87 or mid-grade, but the car calls for premium fuel. It's 91 or 93, you know, if you're tuned, then run whatever you're tuned to. You know, if you're if you're in, in a desperate situation, there's no 91 or high test or, you know, premium available in your area, run what you can run to get home or get to the next fuel station. But run what you're supposed to run. The car is tuned from the factory for a specific fuel and, you know, you want to prevent pre-detonation and ignition issues, just run the proper fuel. And speaking of ignition, let's talk about spark plugs and the ignition system. Another area of neglect, people just don't like to change their spark plugs. I don't know, it's a, it's a pretty easy job on the Q50 and I have a video doing it. So if you have any uh, hesitation to doing it yourself, you can certainly handle it. It's a, it's a pretty easy job. So check that out. I think I even have links to spark plugs uh, in the tool that you would need, the spark plug socket. Uh, simple. The other side of that is ignition coils. This is a situation um, too where I say if you're not really experiencing any problems, I wouldn't worry necessarily about changing the ignition coils, but there are a bunch of options available on the market for you, including Z1 Motorsports, but you can always go with the OEM uh, ignition coils. Uh, but making sure you have you know, fresh spark plugs, you change them at regular intervals, uh, and you're paying attention to how the car is running that's important. It's going to help your car run more efficiently. It's not going to pull more power out of the car, but it will allow you to make the power that the car is supposed to make. So it, it's that combination between fuel and the proper uh, healthy ignition system is going to be, uh, it's going to be vital. The fourth category and another one that ties in directly, that is directly related to fuel and spark, of course, is air. The other element that your car needs to run if you have a colder intake or you have the factory air boxes still in place, keep an eye on your air filters. A dirty air filter can be extremely detrimental to how your car runs. And if you have a dirty air filter, that means your mass airflow sensors could possibly getting, be getting dirty as well. So keeping that whole line free of gunk and grime and dust and dirt and moisture and contaminants and buildup, blah, blah, blah. Change your air filters. Make sure your intake tubes are clean. Make sure your map sensors are clean. Uh, that, along with proper fueling and a good, uh, a nice spark, the car's gonna run great. The great thing about everything that I've already talked about to this point is that everything is relatively inexpensive and simple to do on your own. It, it, the maintenance part of it, or even upgrades for that matter. So uh, with some basic tools and just a little bit of money, you can really make sure your car runs properly for a long time. The final category that I would throw out there is just regular sort of maintenance wearable item type things. Uh, so keeping an eye on brake pads and rotors, making sure they're in good condition if they, and that they have plenty of life left in them, uh, but also paying attention to things like ball joints and bushings, things of that nature, sway bar bushings, your rear diff bushing, for example, your uh, rear subframe bushings. It's going to make sure that you don't have any weird vibrations, that you're putting the power to the ground effectively, um, that you're not getting any clunking and, and weird noises as you start and stop, and things like that right? And, and making sure your car is stopping properly. And guys, I got videos on all this stuff. Just search Speed Culture Studios brakes, Speed Culture Studios diff bushing, Speed Culture Studios sway bars, air filter, blah, blah, blah. Whatever category you're interested in, just search that and that, those videos will pop up. And I got links in, the, in those videos, descriptions and how to's and the whole nine yards, tons of videos out there on the channel. So if you're interested in any of this stuff at all, make sure you check those out. But really, these are just a few key categories that I would keep an eye on as you look to maintain or prolong the life of your Infiniti Q50, your 2014, 2015 Q50s. And again, G37s, G35s, 350Zs, newer Q50s and Q60s, a lot of these things will cross over and uh, just there are a couple of key things to keep in mind. I'm sure if you stay on top of these key items, you're going to be happy with your Q50 for many, many miles and years to come. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. But again, check those videos out because they'll get into way more specifics than I can in just the comment section. So thanks for watching this video. I appreciate the continued support. More stuff coming for the channel. See you in the next one.